Tune in as this is the help video for the take home practice quiz being issued on Friday for my A day students and Monday for my B day students. Number one, it says the sum of the interior angles measures of a convex polygon is 1260 degrees. How many sides does it have? Let's underline our keywords. Get in the habit of underlining the keywords. We have the word sum, interior, polygon, 1260. And actually, the most important word is the word is, because that is an equal sign. Now, you have four equations that you could be using related to this page four. Let me summarize them. Remember the sum of interior angles. Sides minus 2 times 180, so top margin, you write sum interior equals sides minus 2 times 180. The next line, the sum of exterior angles will always be 360. The sum exterior will always be 360. Then you have each angle of a regular polygon, sum over sides, ain't this fun? So for a single angle or each angle, it equals sum over sides. Now technically that's for both. We use the same concept, it's sum over sides. Now what changes is the sides. So here for one, interior angle, and this only works if it's regular, your sum is n minus 2 times 180 over n. And for over here, for one exterior angle, your sum is 360 over n. So that's four equations. You need to have this memorized. So looking at this one, we're dealing with the sum of the interior, so that's going to be this equation. So we write sum interior angles equals n minus 2 times 180. Now this number here, we know it can't be n, because if you see the word polygon, that means you do not know the number of sides. If you knew the number of sides, we'd call it an octagon or a nonagon or a decagon or a pentagon or something specific. So the sum of the interior actually gets replaced. And you're going to do your own math. And solve. This one says the measure of a single exterior angle of a regular polygon is 36 degrees. What is the polygon called? Once again, if I, you use the word polygon, your number of sides is unknown. That's a big hint for what you're going to find. We underline keywords. We have a single exterior angle. It's a regular polygon is 36 degrees. Once again, the most important word is the word is. So something is. And what is it? What is is? It's a single exterior angle. So we come up here, and we see the single exterior angle is 360 over n. So we write one exterior angle equals 360 over n. Now you need to figure out where that 36 goes, and your ultimate goal is to solve for the number of sides. It says the two shapes following are parallelograms. Find the value of x and all possible angle measures. Well, since we're dealing with angles, you should be watching out for OCD. So O So start marking. The first one is opposite sides are parallel. So that gives you 
parallel sides. And whenever you have parallel sides, I recommend you stretch them out. So they're parallel going this way, parallel going this way. And whenever you have parallel sides, you should watch out for armpits of the Z. We have opposite sides congruent. So these are congruent. It's going to help us solve for x. We have opposite angles congruent. We want to mark opposite angles being equal. That means these angles are equal, whatever they are. And that means these angles are equal, whatever they are. <coughs> Consecutive angles are supplementary. That means angles that are next to each other are going to add up to 180. Diagonals bisect each other really doesn't come into play. That has nothing to do with the angles. Okay, so starting with these concepts, the ones that are going to influence sides are parallel lines for armpits of the Z, arm opposite angles congruent, and consecutive angles supplementary. So using those three, you're going to find all possible measurements, the value of x and the angles. It says, determine if the following is a parallelogram. If not, explain why. What you're hunting for here is any one of the OCDs. So you hunt for any one of these. You should have these memorized by now. And if you have one, you automatically have the other. Now, there's one more that proves parallelograms that isn't part of the OCD, and it says this. If you have the same pair of sides that are both parallel and congruent, then the answer is yes. I'm going to try just a couple here. So taking a look at this one right here, we look at our given information. And we are given that these sides are parallel. So that's just, that's given, they're parallel. And then notice, watch the angles here. This angle is equal to that angle. So that gives you armpits of the Z if those angles are equal. So that forces these guys to be parallel. So the answer is yes, it's a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel. Let's try the one right below it. We have here, we have these two angles that are equal, and we have these two angles that are equal. And is it a parallelogram? Well, opposite angles, are they congruent? The opposite ones, are they congruent? And the answer is no. So this is not a parallelogram, and the reason why is because opposite angles not congruent, comma, could be an isosceles trapezoid. In this case, it could be an isosceles trapezoid. Let me show you why. Because we have uh, right here. We have two congruent angles going here, two congruent angles going this way, so it matches the markings, so that could be an isosceles trapezoid. So once again, you work through these five, and if it's a no, try to figure out what it could be. Try to figure out what it could be. It says ABC is a rectangle. The measure of ECD is 39 degrees. The segment length AE is 3X plus 7. And BD is 12x minus 10. Find all possible side lengths and segment measures. Step one, let's get this labeled properly. ECD is 
39 degrees. So we go E to C to D, nice and sweet. That's 39 degrees. It's important you trace and sweep very carefully, dot to dot. The measure of AE is, so A to E is going to be 3x plus 7. And B to D is going to be all the way across is going to be 12x minus 10. Now, obviously, they are not equal. It's, under, it's very important you understand that, and you just don't randomly make things equal. AE does not equal BD. So you can't just take that algebra and make it equal. So you ask yourself, what is the relationship between the green and the pink? What is the relationship between the green and the pink? I think you see that the green, AE, it takes two of them to get BD. So we can write it like this. It takes two AEs to get one BD. You're going to use that to solve for your X and then work from there to find all the other segments and sides. Now, as far as angles are concerned, keep in mind the OCD qualities, as well as the fact that this is a rectangle and you have right angles. You're going to use that, and remember in a rectangle, the diagonal lengths are equal in length, which means all four pieces are equal. So you're going to have a bunch of isosceles triangles. Keep that in mind as you're solving. And to get the outer lengths, just so you know this ahead of time, you're going to have to use a right triangle. Says rhombus in EF uh, in rhombus EFGH below EG is eight eighteen FG is fifteen and the measure of HGE is fifty three. So get in the habit of writing everything you know about a rhombus. Take it from your quad family tree. Just get in the habit of listing everything, put it on the diagram, and then work yourself from there. It says, in the following two trapezoids, the medians are drawn. Find the value of x, find the length of the bases and the medians. Let's go ahead and write our equation out for median. Median, also known as a mid-segment, equals, so here we have a median, equals base plus base. Over two. Once you write your equation, then you can start circle plug chug. So median equals base plus base over two. You got a whole number, so we're going to put that over 1. You cross multiply. Don't get happy just because you solve for x, because you have to plug it in and find everything else. The rest you're doing on your own. Good luck.